Imagine living in an era where your beauty is not just admired, but it's mandated, and achieving it could mean risking your very life. Welcome to the Victorian era, a time of opulent gowns and grand balls, but also of perilous beauty standards that demanded women alter their bodies in ways that were not just uncomfortable, but downright dangerous. From corsets that reshaped the torso at the expense of one's health, to poisonous cosmetics and toxic perfumes, the quest for beauty in Victorian times was fraught with risks that are almost unimaginable today. Starting off our list today, we are going to be talking about the tapeworm diet. Eager to conform to the era's svelte silhouette ideal, some women turned to this dangerous and grotesque method, swallowing pills that apparently contained tapeworm larvae. The rationale behind this shocking practice was straightforward, get ghastly. Once ingested, the tapeworms would reside in the intestines, consuming a portion of the host's ingested nutrients, thereby reducing calorie intake and promoting weight loss. This method offered a twisted sort of convenience, allowing one to eat without absorbing all the calories. However, the reality was far from glamorous. Hosting a parasitic worm surprisingly came with a litany of health issues, such as nausea, weakness, diarrhea, and severe abdominal pain. The worms could grow to alarming lengths within the intestines, leading to dangerous blockages and even more severe nutritional deficiencies. The tapeworm diet starkly illustrates the perilous lengths to which Victorian women would go to achieve the era's beauty standards, sacrificing their health in pursuit of an idealized form. Next up, a little less gruesome than the tapeworm, but still fairly bizarre, we have eating chalk or drinking vinegar. Some Victorian women adopted dieting tactics that would raise eyebrows even in today's extreme diet culture. Among these were the perilous practices of eating chalk and drinking vinegar. Yes, that is correct. Chalk, known for its absorbent qualities, was consumed in the hope that it would soak up bodily fluids and suppress hunger, a method as ineffective and uncomfortable as it sounds. On the other hand, vinegar was believed to have appetite-suppressing properties and was consumed in small quantities before meals to reduce food intake. Far from being benign diet aids, these substances posed significant health risks. Ingest regularly ingesting chalk could lead to gastrointestinal blockages, constipation, and malabsorption of nutrients, turning a quick-fix weight loss method into a recipe for malnutrition. Vinegar, while definitely less bizarre than chalk, I will definitely admit that, could erode tooth enamel or irritate the stomach lining, causing a host of digestive issues. These practices highlight the extreme and often misguided lengths to which Victorian women would go to conform to the era's beauty ideals, enduring discomfort, and risking their health for the sake of slimness. Next up today on our list, we have the Belladonna Eye Drops. In an age when batting large, luminous eyes was all all the rage, Victorian women went to astonishing lengths to achieve the wide-eyed innocence that was in vogue. One of the most perilous beauty hacks involved using eye drops made from belladonna, also ominously known as deadly nightshade, a plant as toxic as it is beguiling. I have one rule, stay away from things that are called deadly. It's just a thought. These eye drops would dilate the pupils, creating the sought-after look of youthful, bewitching eyes akin to those of a startled doe. But the beauty came at a cost far greater than just a few pennies at the apothecary, the side of anything but beautiful, ranging from blurred vision and light sensitivity to severe eye pain and even the risk of permanent blindness. The systematic absorption of belladonna could cause an array of disturbing symptoms such as rapid heartbeat, hallucinations nations and dry mouth. Yet, despite these grave risks, the allure of achieving the ideal of ethereal, captivating eyes drove women to repeatedly subject themselves to this dangerous practice. It seems that even in the Victorian era, the saying, beauty is pain, was taken quite literally, with a bit of a toxic twist there. Next up today, we have arsenic. All right. 
I'm not going to expand on that. In the Victorian era, when pale, unblemished skin was a hallmark of beauty and an indicator of upper class leisure, women went to extreme lengths to achieve and maintain this sought after complexion. One of the most hazardous methods was the use of arsenic, a known poison, which women ingested in small doses in the form of wafers or applied topically as lotions. The idea was that arsenic could provide a translucent pallor to the skin, a look highly prized by society and associated with a genteel life far removed from suntanned labor. However, this beauty regimen came with dire consequences. Arsenic is a cumulative poison, meaning that it builds up in the body over time, leading to a host of severe health problems. This could include stomach pain, vomiting, hair loss, convulsions, and ultimately, if ingested in large enough quantities or over a sufficient period, death. The tragic irony of the situation was that while women sought to emulate an ideal of vitality and youth with their porcelain-like skin, they were, in reality, ingesting a substance that could lead to their untimely demise. In Victorian times, female elegance was epitomized by the hourglass figure, dramatically cinched at the waist by tightly laced corsets. These garments, often laced as tightly as physically possible, sculpted the body into the desired shape, but at a high cost to the wearer's health and comfort. The relentless squeeze of the corset could deform the rib cage, compress internal organs, and even cause the fainting spells so stereotypically associated with Victorian women, likely due to restricted breathing and reduced oxygen flow. Beyond the immediate discomfort and breathlessness, long-term corset wear could lead to chronic issues, including digestive problems from the upward pressure on the stomach and intestinal damage from the unnatural reshaping of the torso. Despite these dire health implications, the societal pressure to achieve this wasp-wasted beauty ideal was immense, leading countless women to endure the daily torture of lacing up. The corset was not just a fashion statement, it was a symbol of femininity, respectability, and social status. The garment, designed to enhance the feminine form, also underscored the constraints, both literal and metaphorical, placed on women in the Victorian era. In the ever-evolving theater of Victorian fashion, crinolines and hoop skirts definitely stood out. Like, literally, they were out like this. These garments were engineered to create the era's coveted bell-shaped silhouette, dramatically expanding the width of a woman's gown while allowing for a relatively slim waistline. Imagine navigating through daily life encased in a cage of whalebone or steel, the skirt billowing out to comical proportions. The challenges were manifold. Doorways became formidable opponents, sitting down required strategic maneuvering, and a gust of wind could become a public spectacle. Beyond the inconvenience and absurdity, these garments harbored genuine dangers. Their vast circumference made them prone to catching fire from open flames or embers, a very common hazard in an age dominated by candlelight. There were also numerous accounts of women being injured or even killed after their hoop skirts caused them to fall or become trapped in machinery, carriages, or other perilous situations. Yet, despite these risks, crinoline and hoop skirts persisted as the height of fashion. In a way, these garments symbolized the balancing act of Victorian women, striving for elegance and grace amidst the cumbersome and hazardous demands of their attire, all while maintaining the poise expected of a lady. Next up, we are going down and we're taking it to footwear. In the Victorian era, fashion dictated that women squeeze their feet into pointed boots and perch on high heels, of course, for elegance and femininity. With an emphasis on small, dainty feet, women were often compelled to wear shoes a size or two too small, leading not just to a dainty step, but to a whole host of foot woes. Corns, bunions, and blisters were the painful badges of honor for the fashion-forward Victorian women, often accompanied by chronic pain and difficulties in walking. The irony was palpable. In striving to embody the demure, delicate ideal of the time, women were actually undermining their own mobility and comfort, hobbling themselves both literally and metaphorically. Yet the allure of the fashionable pointed toe and the slender arched heel was too potent to resist, reflecting a societal obsession with appearances that trumped practicality and well-being. 
Next up, we are going to be talking about hairstyling. Victorian women often turned to aggressive and harmful substances to address their hair care woes, with ammonia being a prime culprit. Esteemed for its supposed benefits, ranging from invigorating hair growth to stripping away undesired color, ammonia was a popular choice despite its caustic nature. Yet the reality of ammonia-based treatments was far from beneficial. This potent chemical could wreak havoc on the scalp, causing inflammation, burns, and weakening the hair structure, often exacerbating the very problems that it was meant to solve. The irony was bitter. In their quest for vibrant, healthy hair, Victorian women sub subjected themselves to treatments that could lead to brittleness, breakage, and even significant hair loss. Not only this, but the fumes from ammonia were not just unpleasant, they posed a risk risk of respiratory distress, particularly in the poorly ventilated dressing rooms of the time. Yet, of course, like everything on this list today, driven by the era's rigid beauty standards, many women persisted in using these hazardous concoctions, a testament to the enduring and misguided pursuit of beauty. In this context, the Victorian obsession with hair care serves as an example of how societal pressures can drive individuals to make detrimental choices, sacrificing their health at the altar of appearance. Next up, we are talking about one beauty standard that we still see people going to crazy lengths to achieve, and that is all in pursuit of shockingly bright pearly whites. Among the dubious methods employed during the Victorian era were treatments involving ammonia and charcoal, substances as harmful as they were hoped to be effective. Ammonia, known for its potent cleaning properties, was believed to be a shortcut to a dazzling smile. However, its harshness could wreak havoc on the delicate tissues of the mouth, leading to inflamed gums, weakened tooth enamel, and a host of other oral afflictions that are anything but smile-worthy. On the other hand, charcoal became a go-to for its supposed abrasive action, thought to scrub away stains and discoloration. Yet this rudimentary form of dental care could strip away the tooth's protective enamel over time, inviting decay rather than deterring it. And then there was the practice of using burned bread as a tooth cleaner, a homemade remedy that was more likely to introduce harmful bacteria into the mouth than provide any genuine whitening benefit. These practices highlight a fascinating contradiction of the Victorian era. And next on our list today, we have perfumes. In the Victorian era, a time when the miasma theory of disease was still widely believed, perfumes were more than just a luxury. They were considered a necessity to mask body odors and supposedly ward off illness. Yet, unbeknownst to the genteel ladies dousing themselves in these fragrances, they were often spritzing on concoctions laced with dangerous chemicals. Mercury, known for its toxic properties was a component in some perfumes absorbed through the skin with every delicate dab behind the ears or on the wrists, potentially leading to mercury poisoning, characterized by symptoms as mild as mood swings or as severe as neurological damage. Then there was nitrobenzene, another hazardous substance found in some Victorian fragrances, which could cause an array of health issues ranging from skin irritation to serious respiratory distress and even liver toxicity. The irony was palpable. Products designed to enhance one's allure and purported cleanliness were, in fact, insidious carriers of harm. <laughs> Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.